I kind of really wish I had somebody to just yell an intro for me. Where would I, where would I find that? Welcome this back guy. to the channel. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Appreciate that. So it's been brought to my attention that uh, one of the biggest maybe hesitations people have about doing their type of own, you know, rebuild type stuff or just kind of home projects in general is not being confident in measuring stuff and not being able to use uh, measuring equipment, uh, which it's not a big deal. A lot of people aren't really in that, um, you know, that trade, I guess. You know, not everybody grew up in a machine shop or doing this type of stuff. And a lot of people want to do their own work, but maybe were never exposed to, you know, using micrometers and calipers and just measuring things and, you know, understanding tolerances and just kind of what, what they're doing. So it always ends up being, well, I'll just let somebody else do it. I'll just let somebody else do it. I'll take it somewhere else. You know, they can, they can measure it up. Well, save yourself a little bit of money and peace of mind and learn how to measure some of the stuff yourself. Even if you can't necessarily do machine work yourself, which a lot of us can't, um, there's nothing wrong with knowing how to measure the stuff. So when you do present your project to a machine shop, you can give them a little better idea of like, you know, hey, I got this crank. It looks like it's already, you know, it looks like it's about, you know, two or three thou under on a main. You know, maybe we're going to cut the whole thing 10. You know, just it, it gives them a better idea or understanding of what what they might be looking for. Um, I work on a lot of stuff at work where the customer comes in and they send us on fishing adventures. And what I mean by that is they'll say, it needs something, but I don't know what. I think this is wrong, but I don't know what. So we got to kind of go through everything and look for what they might be referring to. So if you can do some of this stuff yourself, just for better understanding, if for nothing else, better communication to somebody that's actually going to do the work for you. So I figured I got to do some measuring to figure some stuff out here for this. So I thought I'd maybe go... You know, we'll go back in the, uh, you know, not the way back machine, but we'll kind of go back to some beginner stuff here. And some of you probably, a lot of you probably already know how to use micrometers and calipers, but I feel like the people that don't, sometimes they get maybe, you know, they feel like they're going to get talked down to for not understanding how to do that. So now those people that are maybe a little bit hesitant to figure out how to do this stuff, I'm going to show a little quick breakdown. So it's nothing to fear. It's just numbers and it's just getting a feel. And if you can do that, um, you can measure anything and have a little more confidence in your project and maybe, uh, you know, take on some home rebuild projects yourself where you know if you've got good or bad parts and what'll fit what and, you know, what clearances you're working with. So since I got to measure up some stuff on that and we are finally over here point at the right spot we're finally going to break down and uh do some some measuring on that crank and we're gonna set i shouldn't say set because i can't really make an adjustment if it's wrong i could maybe order different variants or something but everything on this motor is going to be standard size standard bore standard stroke standard mains and rods nothing's been cut nothing's been machined but we still want to know what our oil, oil clearances are because you know, that crank didn't come out of this motor and, you know, things can be different. So, it's time. We're going to do some technical stuff and I'm going to show you how to do some measuring. And if you already know how to do this type of stuff, go ahead and watch some of the other videos or something. I don't know. But uh, for you new people that, you know, want to get into this, uh, maybe this will be for you. So, hope you enjoy. Let's get to measuring. So, first thing I should probably start with is just kind of a breakdown on um, some of the basic measuring tools for just any kind of home type machinist. Um, well, I shouldn't even say machinist. Inspector, because you're not really going to be machining anything. We just need to be checking some stuff out and getting confirmation on some numbers. So this is about the most basic of stuff you want to use for doing like automotive type or even motorcycle type measuring. I got a pretty good uh, six inch caliper. This uh, micrometer is a two to three inch mic. Uh, these you get in different sizes, so you're probably going to have to have a few of these, but it's going to just kind of depend on how big you plan on going. Uh, ideally for me, 
uh, just for doing like piston skirts and stuff, a uh, four to five inch mic is going to get me in the ballpark of everything I need to measure. If I got a bore bigger than five inches, uh, I'm doing something right. But anyways, the, uh, the mics you can get, I got a couple other ones here from when I used to do some plastic stuff. So I got a little, got a little guy there, zero to one inch, a one to two. I got a 12 inch caliper. I got a little indicator. And this, uh, this stuff is nothing exotic. Uh, depth mic, the Mitotoyo depth mic. Um, some things you'll probably want to get a better, you know, not top of the line, but a lot of this stuff I got is not super brand name. I got a real good Mitotoyo caliper, and then that depth mic I just showed you was Mitotoyo. But this is your basic, like, Harbor Freight type digital caliper just for measuring stuff real quick, or if I think I might be, you know, heading out to a junkyard or something, I could take that with. Um, some telescoping bore gauges, some inside gauges, you, you squeeze them in, turn the little lock, put them in a bore, and let them snap out, turn the lock, and then you can measure an inside bore without having to get a tool way down into something. So, all real basic stuff. Um, the other real handy tool you might want to get is a cylinder bore gauge. Cylinder bore gauge. Um, these are super handy because you can do um, inside diameter of basically anything round, but you can do all of your rod uh, rod bearings, all of your main bearings. You can do bores. Um, even with like the motorcycle stuff, you can do you know the inside bores on some of the trans case stuff. But uh, a lot of that stuff doesn't really need to be changed. But if you want to measure, go ahead. And then you probably saw me using this when I was doing the runout inspection on that crank. Simple magnetic base with a dial indicator. You can get the majority of this stuff anywhere. Um, the higher end few things I do have, I bought when I was actually working at a machine shop. Um, the other stuff I bought as I kind of needed it for doing my at-home projects because I spent so much time using the stuff at work that I really started to get a feel for even if it's a generic, like this is some, you know, generic mic, you just kind of develop a feel from using this stuff in different brands. Um, even if it's, you know, a knockoff, you get a feel for what's actually kind of a quality, you know, a quality tool. So you don't need the high-end brand name. You don't need to spend, you know, $300 on a, on a mic when you can really get your job done here with one for about 40 bucks. So watch out for your wallet, you know. Not everything has to be high-end because a lot of it is in marketing and names. So <clears throat> with that said, we're going to get going on some measuring, and I'll show you how to actually use and read some of them. Okay, what we're going to do here is we're going to mic this first main bearing on this thing. So what we got to do is open our mic up a little bit here. And this actually has a little ratchet, ratcheting thumb wheel on the end here that will keep you from over-tightening this thing like a C-clamp. So we're going to run her down until she touches. And we're just trying to get a feel for where that drags across the journal. We ain't clamping on there, but we don't want slop. And there's a lock right here. You hit that lock. Now our thumb wheel here, or adjusting wheel, can't turn. Now I'm going to grab something to point with quick. Back. Okay, now all we got to do after measuring like that is we just got to read whole numbers. This line right here goes left to right. That's our zero line. These numbers here, these are our hundredths of an inch. So it would be our mic starts at two inches. So we're at two inches, five. The five is exposed. Get a little closer here. The five is exposed, so we're at two inches, 500. Then, I'm creating a shadow, I'm sorry. We need to count them little lines after the five. Each one of those is 25 thou. So we're at two inches, 500, and focus. This is real hard for you guys to see. I'm sorry. There's two full lines showing. We have to see the line for it to count. 
So we're at two inches, 525, 50. Two inches, 550 thou. Now these are our thousandths of an inch. We gotta count these up until we get as close to that zero line as we can. So we're at two inches, 550 plus five, six, seven, eight. So we're at two inches, 550, eight thou. And now we'll look for the next line that lines up on this scale here. And it looks like it's going to be, what number is that? Can you read that? One, two, three, four, five. Five is lined up. So there's our fourth digit. Two inches, 558 thou. And what did I say that was? Five tenths. So hopefully that makes sense of how to actually read a mic. Um, I know it's kind of hard. My camera doesn't want to focus all the time, but. Five hundred, fifty, eight, and then that five is lined up. Make sense? Good. Now start recording all that stuff over there. I need your help here. Now, I wouldn't recommend miking uh, bearing journals with a caliper. You can if you want to try to do quick references to see if, you know, Say you're ordering up a part, you need to know what size the journal is real quick for some reason, whatever. But I'm going to show you how to read caliper quick. First thing I do is make sure you're zeroed out. Are we zeroed? We're zeroed. Okay. So now this, again, this is going to be, we're just reading whole numbers. It's going to tell us what we need to know. So we'll go up onto our journal here. And again, it's not a clamp. You're just getting a feel for it. Kind of let it center itself. Then it's got a little lock on it. I'm going to try to get it off without banging things around. Okay. Now let's see if we can figure out how to show you how to read one of these. Again, we're just reading whole numbers. This is in, here's our whole numbers here. Where's my pointer? Okay, again, we're just reading whole numbers. So we got zero. It's a zero to six inch mic, so let's read all the way down to absolute zero. So we got our whole numbers. There's one inch. There's two inches. Here's our hundredths of an inch. So we got two, or one, two. Three, four, and now we can see the five. I know it's in the shadow right there. But Trust me, it's there. Oh, over this way. Boy, my lighting out here is terrible. Is that any better? So we're reading across that bottom scale. One, two, three, four. And we can see at five. We can't see six. So we're at two inches, 500. And all we got to do is look at our dial here. Two inches, 550, just about 59. So this reads just slightly different than what the caliper read, but that caliper is also more accurate for this type of thing. Like I was saying, this, this stuff's not complicated. You're just looking at complete numbers. You don't want to look, you know, underneath, try to, you know, oh, I can almost see the six. You have to see a whole number for it to count. And then you just look at the dial, count it. Start with your biggest number first, two inches, 500, 510, you know, you can count all the way around, two inches, 559. It's that easy. So I know that probably wasn't the best tutorial because I was fumbling through trying to find something to point with. Camera wasn't focusing great and it's just horrible lighting. But I just wanted to kind of do a quick breakdown. Hopefully that made sense of how you're just looking at whole numbers. These aren't complicated tools to use. You just got to have a feel. They're not, they're not clamps. You know, you're not trying to just bend things and flex things. 
um, light touch, just a light touch and repetitive. Got to be repetitive in how you do it. So with that said, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to actually mic all the journals on here. I'll probably even do the rods too quick just to record them. I can't, I don't have rods right. Uh, damn it. I said I was going to mention that again. I don't have anything to measure them for, but we're going to go ahead and do the mains and then we'll get going on setting up. I'll show you how to do a dial bore gauge to check our main bearings in the block. So I'm going to do some measuring quick. Come along. So you just saw me run through, do all the mains quick, and I made a note here, because what we're going to do, figure out our main size, we're going to do the main size in the block, that'll be with the bearing, and then we'll get our actual oil clearance here. Um, I do recommend that you measure each one a couple times, make sure you get repeated, a repeating number. Um, like I said, all mine are 558.6, 558.5, 558.4. All within what do we got here three ten thousandths of an inch so that's pretty close to like perfect so I thought I would do something real quick just because curiosity got to me um, since these are all you know new parts and I haven't really looked at any of this stuff I wanted to make sure that I was actually sent parts that are gonna work so I wanted to do some quick measuring so I'm gonna show you how these uh, these inside or telescoping gauges work quick and this is how I just quick check to make sure I was in the neighborhood of where I'm going to end up for my oil clearances without getting the uh, dial bore gauge set up just yet but these these telescoping gauges you just take and squeeze them in turn the lock and they'll stay in now I'm going to show you what we're going to do quick okay I'm uh I'm kneeling down in front of the motor just because I don't feel like rolling stuff around right now. We're just going to, this is like I said, I'm just doing this real quick because I already did it and I was happy with the results. So I'm like, you know, that's kind of a cool, quick way to check things before you really get into like your super accurate fine tuning of measuring. I just wanted to measure some stuff to make sure I got sent the bearings that are in the right ballpark. Um, like I said, I didn't look at any of this stuff until tonight. This stuff's been showing up and I just put it on the bench, put it on the bench. So... This is what I did. So what we're going to do, zoom me in here. So we got our telescoping gauge, telescoping, telescoping gauge. What we're going to do is going to go in here where our crank runs. There's no bearings in here right now. I'll show you why. That's why I didn't set this all up right now. I don't even have the bearings in this yet. So what you do is you unlock that lock. Those little telescoping pieces spring out. Kind of give her a little wiggle, let her center itself. Take your lock, lock it down, slide her on out. Now, there is the measurement of the inside of that bore. Now I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this and how I just did some quick math to figure this out. All right, so I know my head's cut off in here, but that's probably for the better for most people anyways. But so now we know our, our main journal sizes. We already recorded that. And we now have an example of the inside diameter of our main journals in the block. Not with a bearing, but with in the block. So what we're going to do is take our caliper here. or our, I did it. Caliper. It's not a caliper. Take our mic here. And we're going to lightly measure what we got. Lock it down. we got to unlock it first. Lock it down, read our measurement. 
and I am getting two inches, 750. Where we at? Two inches, 752 thou, and yeah, six ten thousandths. So we go. 2.7526. Now we'll keep that number in our mind here. Hold on, now I'm going to go get a bearing. Okay, I'm back. So here's one of my main bearings. And what I'm going to do is I need the thickness of this bearing. So we're going to take our 6 inch caliper here. And I get at 96 thou, right on the dot. Now we know there's two of these in the motor be on each side of the journal so we got 0.096 for our bearing so now what we need to do is take with our calculator here we need to take that bore size we had 2.7526 now we got a minus a bearing for one side minus 0.0 nine six i got a minus bearing on the other side minus point zero nine six equals two inches five hundred and sixty thousand six and six tenths now we're going to have a rough oil clearance number right now before we even stick a bore gauge in the bearings see that so now that is our inside diameter measurement with bearing installed in theory because it's you know, Baron's got to get, you know, seated in and whatever. You get it. I'm going to do some more hand flapping here. But now we will take, that was our number one journal that we just checked. So we got our ID measurement here. Now we're going to minus our journal size. And the number one journal was 2.5586. So we got minus 2.5586 equals 2,000. That's exactly the oil clearance I'm going for. Somewhere between two and a, two and a half is what I wanted. So I already know going into this that I'm going to be in the ballpark of where I want to be with these bearings. So now I'm going to get that dial bore gauge set up when I get back from getting some food. And we'll get our dead nuts measurements, which that dial bore gauge stuff and using, using a mic over a caliper when you can. Um, these are very accurate pieces. But you'll have a hard time getting to the fourth digit. And on these motors that run, you know, 2,000 clearance, that fourth digit's kind of critical to know. Because that's the difference between being a, you know, you could be a thou over or under where you're targeting if you don't have that fourth digit. But I thought it'd be kind of cool to show you actual use for a telescoping uh, gauge set. These are pretty cheap to get. And uh, like I said, we just did a quick reference without not a, not a lot of work. So I'm all set up here, ready to start checking with the dial bore gauge now. I got my main bearing in there. I'm only going to do my number one main for now. These are all torqued down. Um, the rest of them will all go the same. Uh, there's just no point in me showing you those other four. It's just time consuming. But I'll show you how to get a dial bore gauge set up now. So first thing we need is our measurement from our number one main journal. You see we got it there, 2.5586. So what we'll go ahead and do is, and I already went ahead and did this, just because you know me fumbling with this stuff on camera is kind of slow and annoying, but we already have our micrometer set up at 2.5586, that distance. So that is technically my, my main journal size from the crank. Now what you're gonna wanna do is take your dial bore gauge and any set of mandrels and anvils you can get in here to make your reach what it needs to be. I get, you know, in the sets, they usually give you plenty to pick from. But what we need to do, and this is gonna be a little bit tricky, one-handed here. You wanna set it in here, and then you're gonna zero out your gauge. 
So I know that when this thing is at the correct rod, not rod, I'm sorry, the correct main journal diameter will read, oop, I just lost my zero. I'll put this back in there. So it'll read zero. So now when I go to measure that bore, we'll go over here. When I go to measure this bore now, I know that my bearing clearance will be whatever number I read off of zero. So we're gonna do is stick this in here. We're gonna read as up and down as we can get without sticking and losing something in that oil hole. We don't want the oil groove or the oil hole to give us any false readings. So I'm really struggling here to do this one-handed. All right, we're in the bearing there. Now we come down here to our gauge. Oops, I just lost it. We'll get her back, there we go. So I come down here to our gauge and we're just gonna give our tool a little bit of a wiggle. We just wanna make sure that we're finding our proper distance. Now, if we read the needle here, it's going to go one way. It means it's getting bigger. I want to read it. To, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm one-handed here. I keep dropping it off into that oil groove. Let's see if I can get my finger in there to hold it. There. So what we're doing is we're watching our needle. When it starts going bigger, that means we're off-center. We're making, we're making that distance longer because it's measuring at an angle. So what I want to do is read our smallest number. And as you can see, we get to about two and a half thou. And I'm struggling a little bit with this, but yeah. The smallest digit right there, two and a half thou. That's our oil clearance. Two and a half thou on number one main. So it's just, it's, I want to say it's just that easy because it really is pretty easy and it's, it's easy to get very accurate measurements. Um, I'm fumbling around right now because I'm doing this one handed and I'm holding a stupid camera stick, but this tool again was not crazy expensive and just super handy you can go ahead and do the plastic gauge and if you want i can do a video and i'll drop the crank in here and we'll drop plastic gauge in it so we'll have measurements from what you actually get with the tool and micrometers and what you actually will get for a clearance by doing the math and then i can drop the crank in there and we can torque all this down pull it back apart and we can do a little plastic gauge test and we can see how accurate the plastic gauge is compared to our math but all in all, it's not that hard of a process, a little time consuming, but I suggest you get yourself a few tools. They don't have to be expensive. Uh, turn on your radio, get everything as clean as you can get it, and uh, start getting yourself a little system figured out. That's all it takes. Just a little bit of the, uh, the right tools and a little bit of math. So now I'm gonna go ahead and um, I still don't measure the rod journals like I said I was going to. I'll probably do that now before I head inside. But that uh, number one main is good. So I still, like I said, I have to get everything balanced. I'm going to send a rotating assembly out, get it balanced. Um, it's only going to take them a couple days to do it once I have the rest of my parts. But I know we'll be in the uh, ballpark of probably being pretty good and not really needing any, any major machine work to get this thing up and running. Um, some other parts did show up. I got, uh, I don't know if I showed you, my oil pump showed up, my head gasket showed up, I got valve cover gaskets. Um, I did get my head bolts, they're down there. So everything is just kind of coming together. I got a few more gaskets and seals showing up tomorrow. And uh, yeah, we're going on some assembly. So I know some of that probably seemed kind of like an express lesson in uh you know, measuring and everything, but I, you know, I fumbled through a lot of it. Just, I'm so used to doing this by myself and not having to explain nothing. I just, I do it. So I don't rehearse this stuff before I film it and like think of what I'm going to say and how I'm going to do it. I just, it just kind of comes out as I'm filming. So if it seems a little bit clumsy as I'm trying to explain it, I apologize, but it's just real world me trying to explain something as if you were standing here. But in my head, I don't have to explain it. I just do it. So when I'm by myself working, I get a lot done. When I'm filming, I don't get a whole lot done. But that's okay because these videos are actually they're fun to make. And making a video is the same satisfaction you get 
as if you're making a project or building a motor. The you know, it's it's a lot of fun. So I tell everybody I know, like you should uh you should consider if you're working on stuff, do a YouTube channel, start something, show people what you're doing because the videos is part of the project and it's it's pretty fun. But if anybody's got questions on what I showed you, if you just want a clarification, um, again I don't even I don't rewatch these until I'm editing them. So if I misspoke, uh, you're gonna call me out on something or you, you know maybe I, I overlooked something. Go ahead and let me know. I'm not a professional or engine builder or nothing like that. I just I happen to measure some stuff and know how to do some things. <laughs> um, yeah. So next go around, I'm gonna get these uh these all measured up. Next go around is going to be uh ring gapping because I can actually something I can get done before uh, we get that rotating assembly in there. So thanks for watching. Hope I didn't confuse you and hope you had fun and learned something.